Welcome to Couples Becoming Intentional. I'm Carrie. I am John. And here at Couples Becoming Intentional, we want to equip you with different tools and resources so that you can live intentional lives with those that you love to leave a legacy that lasts. Today's question is all about jobs and working. So the question we picked out of our bundle is, what is the first job you have ever had? Would you like to start us off? Sure. So I'm going to preface that my family was not the type of family that when you turn 14, they're going to drive me down to the Dairy Queen and be a dilly dipper. Um a dilly dipper. You Is that got what to... they're actually named? I don't know. But like oh. that's what a dilly bar dipper. Like you just right. went and dipped all the dilly bars. Um, so my parents, honestly, like I didn't have a job until my senior year of high school. And I did what was called at my high school a CTE internship. So I was at school for half the day. What does CTE stand for? I, I don't know. I really don't know what it means. <laughs> Okay. What did you do in this job? So I, for half my day, I was at normal school. And then the other half of the day, I went to my internship, which was at the middle school I graduated from. And I taught, I co-taught, co-taught, co-teached, (laughs) co-teached. I co-taught eighth grade algebra and geometry. And this was common core math, which I did not grow up with. And I hate geometry. And I was really thankful because my college prep math class that I was doing in high school was basically the exact same thing I was teaching my eighth graders. So I, yeah, I was able to teach them a different way because it wasn't common core and they were still able to get the answers. I don't think my teacher really liked me that much because I was able to do that, but the kids really liked me. And now those kids are like have graduated college already which is just crazy to think about. So You're old. <sighs> not really. We're I'm younger than you. That's true. We're not that old. No, we're not. So, John, what was your first job? My job, first job, was once I, after I graduated high school, mm-hmm. because I didn't get my driver's license So after I was in high school. And that could be a whole different conversation. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the criteria to get my driver's license was to pay for it, mm-hmm. but I didn't have a job. So mm-hmm. I couldn't pay for it. So how did you get the money to pay for it? Hmm? How did you get the money to pay for it after high school then? After high school, it's um, like $40 just to take the test because you don't have to pay for driver's ed. Oh, oh, that's right. Because when you turn 18, you don't need driver's ed. You don't need driver's ed. So you never took driver's ed? Nope. Oh my gosh. And I'm still a better driver. Bless your soul. Than you. Um, <laughs> anyways, my first job was um, at a Bible camp. Oh, that's right. Yes. And I did, oh, I forget what the title is called. It was not the Bible camp that we met at. No, a different Bible camp. It's called Gitche Gumi Bible Camp. Way up north, Derry. Oh, yeah, way up north. And <laughs> uh, so I was, uh, is something service? service okay. provider f- service like what did you do so you do <laughs> dish crew and cleaning and so like custodial cleaning um so each week you get like a different task so you get like your job is to clean this toilet once a day that specific toilet well th- this bathroom oh, okay <laughs> and then um but then also you get like switch off doing dish pit Dish pit. What is that? Dish pit. The. What is that? Uh, what is it? So they had two cleaning areas. Okay. If you're on kitchen dishes, you did all the pots and pans. Okay. Uh, but if you were in the, just like all of the normal like trays and stuff that oh, goes yeah. through like the dish that's. The, like we're, what people eat off of compared yeah. to kitchen stuff. Yeah, so it's called the dish pit. Oh, okay. This is weird. How long How long kitchen did you pit. do that? Um, I did it two, three years. When did I serve in 
You started at Lake Lundgren in summer of 2015. Yeah, so I did it 2012, 13, and 14. Okay, so you're talking a summer so job. three years. Yeah. So right out of high school, you did that in the summer. Yep. So then when you went off to college, what type of work did you do, if any? At college? At college. Like oh, at college. Because this is a summer camp. Yeah, so I did have a, a job-ish. <laughs> what do it you mean by ish? ish? <laughs> well, it was a work internship. Did you get paid? I got paid. Okay. So it, you got paid for doing work, yeah. which is a job. Which was like maybe $400 a month. So not very okay. much. But I mean, what more did you need as a college student? Uh, well, you walked everywhere. Unfortunately, yes. Because I did have a car and then I didn't, <laughs> which is another story. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I mean, I still needed to buy groceries. Okay, but really, what kind of groceries did you buy? Milk, cereal, fruit juice, and an optional egg. No, I, <laughs> I never got juice. <laughs> I never had eggs. Um, Pizzas. Yeah, frozen pizza, ramen, yeah, mac and cheese. Yep. So you had to buy butter. So butter. Yeah. Yeah, that that's a college life. And soda, lots oh and lots gosh, of soda. Lots of- you guys he has evolved so much since those early early days (laughs) yeah well i'd get only like three four hours of sleep at nights and so Mm -hmm. to last the whole day i need caffeine throughout the whole day and then i wonder why i can't fall asleep (laughs) and then repeat it the next day yes no college yeah that is so true whole different kind of person for me i did not go to college right out of high school i nannied so once the school year was over, that internship was done, praise Jesus, and uh, I realized at that point I did not want, I think I, I, so I went to college for a year, and I'll, I'll come to that in just a second, to be a teacher, and I wanted to be a middle school math teacher, and looking back, that was very foolish, but that's okay. Um, so right out of high school, I did not go to college right away. I took a semester off, and I nannied for a family and very out of the blue so that was like fall semester so I need for a family and uh, yeah so I need I nannied for the family and then at the end of the year like I knew she was pregnant but they so they had a baby born in January of that year and then also one being born in December of that year and the guy the family I worked for was in finances so he knew he would get a bigger tax return <laughs> If the baby was like, he had two babies in the year of 2014 and by golly, that's what happened. So, but when that second baby was born in the end of 2014, um, they let me go. They said, mom's staying home from work and to raise these two babies and that's it. So I decided to go to college in the beginning of 2015 and I went to UWGB, went to study education and Um, while I was at GB, the job that I feel like I always had every, my sister and I both had this job was working the front desk at the gym at the church that we had. And every Sunday I would drive from green Bay down to Appleton to work the front desk, do my homework for nine hours and then drive home. And that was how I made money in college. It sounds miserable. You know, honestly, when you're just like sitting behind a desk, like welcoming groups and just cleaning and doing whatever, it was, it was a breeze. And it's like, at that point, I like got to see my parents on Sundays, just stop by their house before going home. So you got food. Oh, I dropped off my laundry. Like Uh, I didn't want to pay for my laundry. And we all know Deborah Ann, she loves laundry. This is true. So then, um, was on staff at camp again in 20... 15 that's when we met and then I left college I'm missing something here I went back to school that semester so I was in school only in 2015 and then in 2016 we were engaged moved back in with my parents 10 out of 10 don't recommend and I worked at a gluten-free bakery still have some yummy food from them not from back then but still go there not gluten free. <laughs> Can you imagine if I hung on to? <laughs> I do not have food from 2016 still. You know, Six we. Years old. I will say this on this topic. Little rabbit hole. We just got rid of maple syrup. 
that was we just finished off the thing of maple syrup that we had from guy's house before we got married was that my maple syrup that was your maple syrup wow i really don't eat maple syrup no not that often and look at it lasted eight years that's what you get for sugar water that's true it doesn't expire no it doesn't so i worked at it was called happy belly it's gluten-free bakery and i worked at david's bridal which david's bridal was probably the greatest job i ever had it was so great i was not like the one picking out dresses i was the one behind the scenes like checking people out helping with people as like walk-ins and all that kind of stuff and it was so great got a discount on my wedding dress because duh and it, it was awesome and i loved it and then we got married and moved and then i have yet to ever go back to work there because it's retail and that wasn't my lifestyle at the time so what was your favorite job that you ever had my current one that that was a hard fast transition well well how about you before we go there because i know your current one is your favorite job because it's what you've wanted for a long time well yes what did you go to college for (laughs) i know (laughs) maybe people don't know this well what did you go to college for? What did, what kind of work did you do in college? And what did post-college look like? So, yes, I went to school for material science engineering. Can you explain what that is for people who aren't nerdy like you? Well, my go-to example. Yes, that one. About the DVD player? Oops. No, nope, not that one. Apple products. Apple products. Because everybody has some sort of Apple product or knows somebody that has an Apple product. Okay, if you don't own any type of Apple product... Any? This is insane. I can't even believe this. If you do not own any Apple products, well done. Well done. You go against the grain. This is true. You're Anyways. so avid Android and you have a Mac. Yes, because I use it for podcast recording. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> it has a specific purpose. Anyways, um, so a material science engineer helps pick out a material so like on the apple iphone when they back when they had aluminum backs now they have glass <laughs> anyways they um want a material science engineer would come in and tweak that aluminum to be impact resistant mm-hmm. so that if it landed on the ground the iphone would hopefully be okay it's not perfect you know and so that was like by adjusting the composition of the material like you can get different properties and that's Mm -hmm. i enjoyed it for the three years Mm -hmm. and so so that's what i went for um yeah in between my junior and senior year kind of and kind of my senior year i did a internship with my college with a professor that professor research professor Okay. Uh, named Tom Wood. Mm. We really liked the woods. Yeah, Same we did. Same for our church. Yeah. And um, so I just helped him with samples, cutting, just grunt work, really. Mm-hmm. Um, microscopy, uh, putting stuff in the microscope and looking at this. Oh, okay. That's a fancy word. <laughs> <laughs> microscopy, yes. I, I found it fun. A lot of, I don't know, I got really good at polishing metals. Mm-hmm. Um and looking at things Mm -hmm. um so yeah that was my job um and then i graduated college yeah around my junior senior year i kind of like realized i didn't want to do this for the rest of my life and your loving and brand new wife because we got married in between your junior and senior years told you you better finish out this degree or maybe you already came to that conclusion. I had already came to that okay, conclusion. Okay, good. I don't know if I even told you at I that know. point. I know. After I said that, I was like, I don't think we actually ever had this conversation or I ever had it with you. So yeah. retract. Just kidding. Yeah. So I was like, during my senior year, I realized that like two things would be needed to actually get a career in mm-hmm. that kind of engineering field. And it would be a higher, higher degree. So like a master's or a PhD. And then we would have to move south or out west mm-hmm. because I don't enjoy like there are material science engineer jobs around here. There, it's either forgery, mm-hmm. forge, forgery, working in a forge. <laughs> forest, <laughs> forest tree, not forgery, <laughs> not forestry. Oh, then what is it? For working in a forge. So, like, what is a forge? <laughs> like Nina. 
Nina for- a foundry foundry no, no forgery <laughs> whatever it's called a I, foundry i've been away from this for things for five years yes, so that's true um a foundry a foundry so very I'd, hot yes well i'd be in an office but still oh, yeah. i don't like gray irons and mm-hmm. iron and iron materials right um so i don't want that we'd either move to michigan which had a lot of automo- automobile automotive you got this. use yeah oh, gosh um and so carrie didn't want to move to michigan no and so if i wanted to go into aerospace which was like the aspect the dream the aspect of material science that i really enjoyed and mm-hmm. used a lot of com- composites a lot of light metal material mm-hmm. so aluminum magnesium that fun stuff um i would have to move out west to like washington oregon Mm-hmm. Or down to Texas. So, I mean, honestly, if John and I weren't married and you were still going this route, he would not be living here. Yeah, basically. So, I was like, that does not seem interested. And by the time I was done with my gra- bachelor's, I was just done with college. Mm-hmm. Like, there was no point of going for another couple of years for a master's. I would just like, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what I feel like most people when they graduate are just like, I'm over this. Yeah. So we moved in with your parents. Again, 10 out of 10 do not recommend. Especially being married. Being married, living in a basement with Puck. Yes. Our, our cat, cat. Our giant black cat. When my parents had two dogs. No, I think they have Chloe. <laughs> Rip. Um, they still had Chloe at the time. So there were three dogs plus our cat. Plus we were not even a year married. Yeah. And it was just awful. Yes. So I recommend I went back to work at the gym because you had like three jobs. Oh, my gosh. Let's not even get into that. Um, I always work a lot. So what? I know we're working on this. Um, Carrie would work at 120 hour job if, per week if she could. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. If I was not. Because I I love what I do, and we'll get to that later. Um, yeah. Anyway, but during that time of us living at my parents, the reason why we did is because John didn't have a job. Yes. Like, we applied for... You applied. I didn't. For, like, quite a few material science. I think the best thing I loved about that season was <laughs> um, going when he would have these interviews, I would get to come with him. Not on the interview, because that'd be weird. Um they would put me up in a hotel. Yeah, they would, it was so awesome. I, we'd get refunded on meals. That yeah, we had. and gas. And gas. I yeah. think this really only happened, oh, like two times. No. It was like three or four. Yeah. The one that really stands out to me is we got to stay. They put us up in the hotel at the Dells. Oh, this was such a great weekend. They put us up in a brand new hotel at the Dells. Oh, Never yes. stayed there before. So like I grew up going to the Dells. The interview was outside of Madison, right? Or no, was this the this one is... in Madison? Was this here? No, because Sierra Nevada put us up in a place in Madison. Yeah. This was the one that was in Ho-Dunk, middle of nowhere, where this coffee shop I went to, I kid you not, did not have Wi-Fi. How was I supposed to work if there was no Wi-Fi? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was so weird. I said we're not moving here, yeah, but I'm don't... totally reaping this. But this was the time that we got those discounted, like, WIXX, which is a local, like, pop radio station here. They gave out, like, free... Um, oh, tickets to yeah. the Dells and somebody was giving them away on the marketplace and well, I said like, yes it was, please it was like they're opening up for the yes. season so you yes. could go do the duck boats for free go golf for free yes. putt putt golf for free and like a lot of different things that were super cheap like you could do Mount Olympus which no thanks and like all these different things and oh my gosh that was such like out of that like really difficult like just being home and not feeling like or like being back in my parents house and just not feeling really settled like those were the different things that really brought me and us like closer through that really like crazy season. And I will say during the season, I went and got a job up in Green Bay at a customer service phone call company called Alorica. It doesn't, um, it's not around anymore. Actually, fun fact, Spring Lake Church where we attend is in the downstairs part of that building. So when we bought that way after my Alorica days, it was just so crazy. Um, we were just doing like, personally, I was just doing whatever it took to pay bills. And we had not so that many we bills. had not that we had a lot, but like at that point, John had student loans. Like we had other things that we actually did have to, <laughs> we actually did have to do. 
and I didn't have to pay back my student loans until I got a job. Oh yes, that is right. So that was a blessing. So all that to say, John, did you end up with a engineering job or where, where did that leave us after you graduated? Uh, no, we, we're still not in my parents' no. basement. No, with we're two not. Kids. We're in our own basement <laughs> with our two kids in our own home in our own home. <laughs> uh, so no, I did not get an engineering job. I was that good. Yes. Looking back, was that good? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think if I I pursued that, I wouldn't realize what God's calling actually was for me, my mm-hmm. life. Um, but we'll get to that. Um, so after that co- that year, that summer, that mm-hmm. summer. Oh, we were we were helping your dad out paint a deck. Okay. And you, oh you signed gosh, up. Yes. You signed up for like a temp agency to do yes. random jobs, mm-hmm. and uh, random. You got a random phone call during it saying, mm-hmm. "Would you be interested in this quality assurance. testing? Yeah, yeah. Test, quality ass- assurance." You like, I I overheard it. I'm like, I would be interested in that. <laughs> and so like you said, no, I'm not. But my husband is. But my husband is. And so <laughs> they literally called me five seconds later and said, yes. what is your information? Let me sign you up for under this temp agency so yes. that you can go do this job. Mm-hmm. And I was paying like $10 I, an hour. And it was literally only going to be one day. Oh, my gosh. That's right. Uh, we ended up not finishing the job. So he was like, <laughs> come back tomorrow. <laughs> so I got paid for two days of doing just – it was uh, – is at a random like machine shop. Okay. And we were testing like door locks on something. So you literally just took a pen uh-huh. and to make sure like you push it on a specific area and mm-hmm. to make sure that it doesn't like break or fall oh, apart. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I got paid like $40. <laughs> <laughs> it should be more than that. Or $80. $80. Say, $80. After. Yeah. You guys, to us back then, that was, that was a. <laughs> That was a lot. <laughs> yeah. And then the temp, temp agency gave me another placement at PDQ Manufacturing. Yes. And this is up in the south side of De Pere. Yes. And De Pere. And it looked like it was going to be a long-term placement mm-hmm. for for it. Potentially full, like, full-time like full employee. Mm-hmm. So we ended up moving into to De Pere. Yes. In yep. an apartment like mm-hmm. four minutes away from where I worked. Yes. Mm-hmm. What were you doing at that time then? What wasn't I doing? That's true. Um, So this was summer of 2017 that we moved September of 2017 up into De Pere. John was working at PDQ. I accepted a position. This is what actually like really helped us move was I accepted a position of um, at Spring Lake. So at our church in elementary education, working with the woman who led us to Spring Lake. And uh, I was also, also nannying for a family and that was a nightmare. I The kids were so sweet. I was not emotionally, like, at a good spot to be able to, like, now knowing the skills I do, like, parenting for four years, I would not have done a lot of the things I'd done. And this is someone, like, I worked with kids a ton, and I thought I was really good. And now, like, having my own kids is just a whole different ballgame. It's your um, own kids. You have them It is my own seven. kids, yes. Um, and I was the saving grace as we got pregnant with Finn, like, the month we moved in, it, it was, was so, so dumb. I was so mad. Anyway, we can talk about that. We, moved in. we can talk about babies and all that kind of stuff in a different episode. And this one's all about jobs because, yes, we're still talking about jobs. Um, we've had a lot. We've had, I've had so many jobs. I didn't even talk about all the jobs I had when we were living in, in Houghton because that oh, was a yeah. crap ton. And anyway, I just remember one time we, when we did our taxes, you, oh had my gosh, that was five, a mess. Five different W 2s. Oh, that was such a mess. This year, I think it was significantly... Well, I don't know. I had quite a few this year. But the hard thing about that was that the year we swapped... So 2016, we swapped from living in Michigan to living here was... Or like in Wisconsin, was out of state, in state. So I had to pay state taxes for two different states. It was a mess. We didn't get any money back. Or if we did, it was really small. Um, Anyway, so at that time, I was nannying... I started my Mary Kay business shortly after that and working at, at church. Um, and then once Finn, the saving grace, one, before Finn was born, I stopped nannying because what 39 week pregnant lady is going to work wrangling five kids around? No thanks. 
um, blessed to all you moms who do that. And uh, there's a reason why we stopped that too. There is. I can't imagine having more. <laughs> they fit in our car really great right now. And they still fight. Um, <laughs> they, oh, once Finn was born, I had done with nannying. So I was like taking on this like stay at home mom role, essentially. Um, that was something that you and I had really envisioned for a really long time is that once we started having kids, again, this happened a lot sooner than we were anticipating. Um, and uh, one of us would stay home. And I really felt like I was in a season where I'm not nannying anymore. I really want to be home. And I'll be honest, I really felt like that was like the holy thing to do. Like this is what, this is what women who love Jesus, they stay home and raise their kids. Like that is what a biblical mom is, is they stay home and raise their kids. And I believe that for an extremely long time. And so I'm still working at Spring Lake. I still have a thriving Mary Kay business and I'm taking care of little itty bitty tiny Finn who turns four soon. Ah, it's crazy. Um, and so at this point in time, you're still working away at PDQ. Yes. When did you make the transition out of PDQ? Um, shortly after. I think I only worked there for like four or five months. I oh, was going to say, it was right before Finn was born, right? Right before Finn was born. It was two months before Finn was born. Okay, so Finn was born May of 2018. So... It was like end of February you started at... Oh my gosh, yes, can we tell this story about how we ended up at... How you ended up at Badger? Uh, sh sure. Oh my gosh, this is the great... <laughs> this, if... Like, this is such a God moment. And we... When we went out, it was Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day of 2018. So I'm like ginormously pregnant. My parents invite us with like some of their friends to like a coffee shop. Doesn't exist anymore. It's a different coffee shop now. And they were doing like a Valentine's Day event, would you say? Like a, it was a Valentine's Day. Yeah. Like, like prefix meal. My parents were paying for a ticket and we said free food. Yes, we're coming down. We're in. We always say yes to free food. Always. So if you say have free, yes food, to free food, yes, we will take your free food. Exactly. And it, we like met this other couple, Aaron and Jared, never met them before. They were friends of a friend. And we like started asking him like where he works. And he said he worked at this place called Badger Sheet Metal. It was, I don't know, five minutes the other direction from our apartment. And he was a welder and she was a stay at home mom and they had four kids. And I was like, well, if I want to be a stay at home mom and I only have one kid, I think we can make this work. And the kicker is that he said he was split the sign-on bonus with you yes that was that and it was like a thousand dollar sign-on yes. bonus. yes and we're like well there's no harm in applying no harm to see and you got the job well yes i had the option between two different jobs because... oh my gosh oh my gosh that's right i forgot about all this oh. yeah so yikes <laughs> they... <laughs> sorry it's 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 a company where like people who barely maybe not even graduate high school like mm -hmm. the only requirement for the job was to have a high school graduate degree yeah um and so i'm like well then mm -hmm. all right let's apply for this and so yeah i applied they had me in an interview like the next week yes <laughs> so during, quick during an ice storm and like the oh. guy was like oh the floor manager he was mm -hmm. like wow you came during the ice storm i'm like it's just ice like yeah i've driven in worse yeah we're from northern michigan and yeah. remember this <laughs> i went to, to michigan tech it's yeah a lot worse there yes um and so he's like he was really impressed by that fact mm -hmm. and so he's like yeah half like half the floor people didn't even show up today oh gosh um to so, give you an idea <laughs> and so yeah he's like yeah we have two positions available um either you're going to be in the wash like the washing room, like the washroom where they like wash parts mm -hmm. or you could sort. I'm like, he's like, the sorting job starts at four in the morning and goes until two in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. The ten you work four tens. So you get mm -hmm. Fridays off. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, I, I really don't. John is not a morning person. I despise, never has been. Never will be. <laughs> despise the morning. Yes. I would like my day to start at 10. He would probably prefer that to be a 2 p.m. to 4 a.m. type of job. Yes if i wanted to actually focus yes um so i'm like i think i'm gonna go with the like the washing job mm -hmm. and i'm i like 
the next day though, I'm like, actually, I think I'm going to go with the sorting because mm-hmm. like for having Fridays off, that right. sounds great. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I might be a zombie for four days, but I get to sleep for three days. And that's exactly what happened. Yes. It wasn't a great, I mean, it helped pay the bills. Like I started yes. at like $13 an hour, which was more than 10. Yes. <laughs> we thought we were rich. Oh, yikes. That's, uh, um, I'll, we'll talk about our finances in a different episode yeah. <laughs> during that season. I don't know how we made ends meet. John's eyes just got really big when he starts thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. I We were not financially literate back then. And no. We had not much money. No, we were not. Well, to give you a concept, we had just became new parents. And John's working these insane hours that not are not in alignment with how he's wired. And it was a mess. Mm-hmm. It was such a mess. Yeah. I was really thankful we we reached out. I think it was like in beginning. It was beginning of May of that year, of the year that Finn was born. We reached out to church and said we need counseling, like we need support of like how do we navigate this? And they basically said, ha, "This is this is the reality of counseling nowadays." They basically said, You're, "This is not a dire need, but we will we will match you with a couple in the church." So. Kelly and Kurt were like so wonderful during that season of like having a newborn and like walking us through like just different things in life because they had three kids and now they have a fourth um, of like just different things in that season. And that's that what that was what really helped. But man, let me tell you what. Can you talk about what came? How did that come to an end? Because you did not stay there forever. How long were you there? And then how did you move four. over four months, four years? You were in that position for no, four years? No, I was years? at Badger oh for four gosh. years. Oh, my gosh. I was like, you were I not. was, um, I think it was like two and two. Oh, yeah. So right about like two years later, year and a half later. Yeah, or somewhere something like there, that. They, it's all blurry. Um, one of their, or they were getting more jobs. And mm-hmm. so they were looking for a fourth person in their programming. Yeah. Um programming department department Mm -hmm. so basically just using autocad solidworks kind of like general drafting stuff and um i'm like this one's fun it's Mm -hmm. on a computer i can be at a desk Mm -hmm. not moving all day i don't have to wake up at 3 30 in the morning anymore because it started Mm -hmm. at 7 which is a big step in the right direction right and so i said i threw my hat in the ring said Mm -hmm. absolutely i want to apply for this job Mm -hmm. um they said you don't have any, you don't have the, you've never used AutoCAD. You've never yeah. used um, SolidWorks. Solid and Valid. they said, they said, and like apparently not many other people applied for it. Oh, mm-hmm. And so they're like, well, you can go to back to school, mm-hmm. you know, school is just like, oh, great. And like take just like basic classes yeah. to work your way up. So mm-hmm. I took. They paid for you to yep. go back to Fox Valley Tech. Yep. And so I took some beginning and intermediate um AutoCAD mm-hmm. and then a couple months later moved into that position mm-hmm. and uh it was a lot better like so much better family wise too yeah and so yeah I had a lot more energy because I wasn't waking up at the before the crack of dawn yes very true um and so yeah I and I, I enjoyed the job I could I had more freedom to like mm-hmm. I could actually listen to podcasts I could listen yeah. to audiobooks um so yeah and i yeah it was a good job Mm -hmm. so all during this time i think the biggest thing that was really going on in both of our hearts is i had um, my mary Kay business and was doing really well and um, back before like right around the time that finn was born um we really got this vision for what life could look like with john not working Mm. and so we're talking four years ago and I believed for a very, very, very long time that it was going to be through Mary Kay that I was going to be, you know, top 1% of a network marketing company, you know, the dream. Everybody's and dream. Everybody's dream in network marketing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not shading or like throwing shade to network marketing. Some people do make it. Into the Some 1%. people do make it. And that is a very, very beautiful thing when it's done very well and wise. And i um, not saying that was me all the time. Um, and not going into debt, not going into debt, not going like sacrificing things on the altar of your family and all that kind of stuff. And I've been both of those um, and really just like had this aha that like maybe this isn't for me. 
Um, and I still have my Mary Kay business, just not like actively like striving to be the top 1%. It was so funny. Brianna, um, John's niece, well, our niece, um, was like, do you still do Mary Kay? And I was like, yeah. She goes, well, you could still earn the pink car. And I was like, you're right. I could. I definitely could. Um, and I just thought that was so funny because that's all people know Mary Kay for is makeup and pink cars. Anyway. And it's iconic. Oh, it is iconic. Um, so right after Penny was born. So now we're fast forwarding to 2020. Um, oh, gosh. Yes. Pandemic hits. Pandemic hits. And a week later, our daughter is born in the midst of a pandemic that nobody knows anything about. John's the only one who can be with me in the hospital. Anyway, come home and life is hell. Oh, my gosh. I couldn't go anywhere. You're you're an essential worker. So you're going to work every day at Badger, whatever. And yep. um I'm wrangling two kids. Can't go outside. Like, can't go to a park. Like, can barely go outside. I thought the cops were going to get me. <laughs> it was so bad. And I was like, okay, there's got to be more to my life than just, like, this Mary Kay business and being a mom. So I really fell into freelancing. And um, I, like, started serving Mary Kay directors, making, like, money. Like, I did the work and I got paid. Like, network marketing, it's great because sometimes you can get paid for not doing work because your team works, which is great. Or other times you put in all this effort and energy and nobody buys. So it's like I wasted a lot of my effort and energy. So I found freelancing. And let me tell you guys, that was such a blessing to our family. It still has been a huge blessing to our family. It's how we got debt free so quickly. Um, it's how we've been able to go on vacations like the ones that we have because we and we got wise with our money. Um and started just being really intentional with how we use the money, the income that I was making through freelancing. And through all of this, we like, we're coming to a decision end of 2021. So we're fast forwarding. John's still working at Badger. I'm home with the kids working my freelance job. And my income is coming up close to what maybe like close to what you were making. Um, me, I don't know. I, that might sound a little exaggerated. It was probably, it was a, it was a good amount for our family. And they it was at the point where we're like I really want John to come home so like the whole goal was to replace my freelancing income with your income so that way you can come home I freelance full-time then which is really only like replace my income with your income yes yes because we're a single income family have been since kids were born um so replace John's income with freelancing income and bring John home so he can be a stay-at-home dad and uh, the doors did not open for that well, you, you kept getting closer. You take a yes. step, like you'd get there and you're like, oh, I have a $5,000 a month. And then right. a client would drop you. Yes. And you say, okay, now I'm down here. And so right. the the gamble that it is of having your own entrepreneur business, business. Mm -hmm. is that like at a moment's notice, you might have a $10,000 a month mm -hmm. and the next month you might have 2000 Yes. And so it is very, very like... Inconsistent. Inconsistent. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say. Not... It's a very faith-based. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You have to look, oh. say, okay, okay, God, like, yes. where is How this is this going to happen? Come? Yeah, that's so, where I'm at right now. <laughs> and so, um, so you were doing that. And so mm -hmm. what opportunity came across mm -hmm. your, your path um, that really just open the door of allowing me to come home because surprise i am a stay-at-home dad yeah i've been since november so like what six happened six months yeah wow that's six months oh what happened um, of november or october november october november ish um so i had a client drop me in october and this was like probably half if not a third of my a third if not half of my income and I was devastated. Like, even if I look back on 2021, like, this is my marker moment because I, like, lost all this. And it was so sad and depressing and um, really brought up a lot of, like, money idols and that kind of stuff. And in that time, our church was looking for a marketing communications director. And I was like, whatever. I don't want to be full time. Like, I'm so over this. Like, ugh, I'm an entrepreneur. I want the freedom. I want my freedom. Ugh, gosh, I don't want to be. I don't want to be tied down to PTO. <laughs> I want a vacation when I want. Literally my thoughts. And um, I like looked at the job description. This is so dumb because y'all, I didn't even know how to find the job description for this. And it was literally just clicking the image. I'm like, ugh, okay, this is ridiculous. Yes, yeah, so I, we're reading through the job description, 
And I'm like, I can do this. Like, this is what I can do. So I like contacted our executive pastor and I was like, hey, Jeff, like, can I get more information about this job? Like, I think I want to apply. And to give you con- like content, con- like context, I, the last time I worked at Spring Lake, I was in elementary education in our kids ministry. So he's kind of like, this is kind of out of left field. Four or five years before. Yes, exactly. So I stopped on, this is like a three year gap in between of me coming on staff, leaving because Finn was like, I wanted more time with Finn. I was going to earn my pink Cadillac. <laughs> and well, that's also why we moved to De Pere is because yes. we, you were both working in yes, exactly. Green Bay area. Yes. So I like apply for this job and now he's like, can you tell me more about what you do? This is kind of like last time we talked to you, like you're in Mary Kay earning a car and like not in children's ministry anymore. Like talk to me about this. So I had a good conversation and um, I interviewed and interviewed and I got the job. Mm-hmm. And the coolest thing about it was it's, I'm actually not the marketing communications director. I'm going to be getting a new job description soon, um, just with all the transitions we're going through. Um, but I became the communications and connections coordinator. So Carrie with all the C's. Um, yeah, Carrie is the connections and communications coordinator. Can you believe that? So really what I do, all the C's. So I uh, do all of our internal and external communications, but then I also like oversee all of our connections. And so that is like making sure people get connected with our church. How do they feel most loved and appreciated, which is so in line just with who my person, who I am in my personality. And so when we took that job, when I took that job, start date was November 1st. John worked one more week at Badger and was home right like before Christmas. Yeah, and we were like, we were anticipating me quitting my job around like the new year. Yes, like and you then, were going to put in your two weeks after yep, Christmas. Yep, and then it just went like, bam, yes. bam, 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 and we're like, okay, I'm quitting my job because this is like, okay, all right. Yes. And so. It was the craziest thing. Yeah, it was so crazy. And I, I enjoy, really enjoy stay, being yes. stay at home dad. It's um what I've wanted for what, three, four years now. Right. Also during that time though, like I knew that like stay at home dad is only a stepping stone into what right. I wanted to move. Cause I yes. knew about two, three years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Two years ago. Cause yeah. it's right when, about when I started helping with youth group. Yes. It was mm-hmm. about two years ago that I knew that like I would need, if I wanted to pursue what my actual calling was, what mm-hmm. my ac- actual like dream job now is, yeah, I would need to go back to school. Right. Granted I could go away of the of garrett yes <laughs> an intern resident ordained yes do you want to just a, just quick share like what you're actually wanting to do oh so i want to become a pastor that's right yes and i know specifically i want to become a discipleship pastor mm-hmm. or a spiritual formation pastor mm-hmm. and for me it's just like i i know that like i would feel better or I want to go to seminary because Mm -hmm. like, I just like, I want, I like knowing that I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Of like, okay, I actually have training on this. And the confidence behind it too. Yeah. Like when I have that degree, I get that, I gain that confidence. Right. And so like, I've been doing some teaching here and Mm -hmm. there Mm -hmm. with um, youth group. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the biggest things that Mm -hmm. like, for me is that I don't have the confidence. Mm. And so I make self remarks, self deprecating humor that Mm -hmm. I have of like, if I lose my space spot or if I, um, if I, um, get, if I fumble or I say the wrong word, then I like, I point back to it and say like, Oh, don't you hate that? Or, Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, I always do this. And Mm -hmm. so I think, with more confidence obviously that's a learned trait as well yep and so like i don't necessarily need the seminary degree Mm -hmm. but you want it like you genuinely like want to learn more too well right i i'm a nerd yeah and i want to learn how to parse greek verbs yeah okay see nerdy nerd (laughs) yes go ahead so yeah i just like you can't really do that anywhere else they mm-hmm. suffer in a, in a seminary and so mm-hmm. and just be able to communicate the bible communicate mm-hmm. the bible message the bible story in a very clear and captivating way clear and morsies what morsies clear and captivating is morsies there's more 
because we've been uh, oh my gosh more letter c's okay thank you i was like am i missing like this major yes. concept okay no. ironically c's is what i got when i was in college <laughs> and full circle <laughs> um so that's a, that's a, where we're at right now so i've been at spring lake in this new position i actually work full-time first time having salary and benefits like praise the lord for health insurance um yes with our type 1 diabetic over here and so it's it's been really good i will say this has not all been sunshines and roses sunshine and roses it's all like good things I our, know, our kids finn things. had a really difficult time transitioning that sounds yeah. weird i had a difficult but, time with the career change for me because i've been home his whole life yeah and then for me to be gone, he I feel like, you can correct me if I'm wrong, he's in a, better, a significantly better spot now. Well, it took about three months, which anybody's right. going through change takes yes. about three months. Yeah. Like, if you're three, if you're 25, if you're yes. 55, mm-hmm. t- give it three months, yeah. and then you'll see an actual change. Yeah. And so about three months, like, Finn realized dad is going to be home. Yes. Consistently, mama goes to work. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's... It's been great. Like, yeah. Obviously, now that when mama's home, daddy's chopped liver because oh my gosh, I want so mama, true. I want mama, yes. I want mama. Mm-hmm. But like, I get them the rest of the time. Yeah. The forty hours that she does work. 30 yeah. For yeah, ish. roughly. Weird. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's uh been really good. Mm-hmm. In addition to my full time job, I still do my marketing freelancing on the side, and that's been really good. I've been. Um, scaling down like or a little bit more particular about what clients I take and like what kind of jobs I take which has been really good just because my time's limited now because I work full-time um, but still finding like all those little gaps of time here and there to be able to do it and the income from that is going to pay off our car <laughs> um, so it's been nice <laughs> having the boat that and. A story. yeah that's a whole different story um, but you guys that's that's where we're at in your life John, John is home. He would love to be in seminary in the next three to five years. When, and next, when our kids are in full time school. Yes, and when our kids are in full time school. So, so like two more, three, minimum three, because Penny will be in fall in three years. She'll be starting. Kindergarten. Oh, five K, which is kindergarten. Yes. Yeah, That'll be it's three, crazy. In three years, right? Yep. I mean, we could minimum put her. We years. could put her in sooner if we wanted to keep her. We full could day put it four K because yeah. Vincent third half day half time three K. Yeah. We started him a little bit early at the private school. <laughs> yeah, well, he's also a genius, so. Well, Penny is also a genius. Yeah. That's what parents have to say, right? Well, our kids are smart, though. Yes, that's right. Well, anyway, you guys, we will see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this episode all about jobs, all about our life story, and all about all the careers and all the different things that led us to where we are today. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to another episode of Couples Becoming Intentional. As always, if you have a question that you would like us to answer here on the podcast, you can go ahead and send us an email at jcvhouse at gmail.com or you can send me a DM over on Instagram at Carrie Vaco. We'd love to be able to answer and feature you on here on the podcast. And as always, if there is somebody in your life who would benefit from this episode, feel free to go ahead and send them the link. And if you love this content, we'd love to be able to hear from you. So go ahead and leave us a review over on Apple Podcasts. Until next time, we love you and we appreciate you. See you guys. Bye.